What's going on everybody? My name is Joe Hurst, freelance logo and identity designer. And today I want to teach you guys a really quick down and dirty way that you can use the golden ratio in your logo design. If you're unaware of what the golden ratio is, don't worry, fear not. I will briefly explain that and how you can go ahead and create a system for using the golden ratio in future designs and how you can quickly calculate that. However, if you're not interested or you already know what the golden ratio is or you get a little bit confused later on, you can always come back to this section. Feel free to skip this section if necessary. Without any further delay, we're just going to crack straight into this and get started. All right, guys. So here I am in Illustrator with a mock-up that I've just made real quick. Uh, feel free to skip this part if you already know what the golden ratio is or you're not interested in learning about it or how it's calculated. So the long and the short of it is that the golden ratio is an irrational number that approximately equals 1.618 and it results when the ratio of two numbers is the same as the ratio of their sum to the larger two amounts. So what that means is where I have listed here uh, long over short is equal to the measurement of both together over long, which is equal to 1.168033. When we simplify that, it's side A over B is equal to side AB over A, which again is equal to the same mathematical equation of 1.618. So the visual demonstration here, you've probably all seen this before. This is our golden spiral inside of the golden ratio. So we can take our square here and divide it by 1.618 and get this smaller square. Continue to do that and we'll get a smaller square, smaller, smaller, smaller still. The same with the circle here and then the second circle, third, fourth, and so on. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that incredibly clearly to you, but the main takeaway from this is that you can achieve the golden ratio by multiplying or dividing by 1.618 to get you an approximation which is almost mathematically correct at least on a visual scale for something that you might be wanting to create that uses the golden ratio all right guys so here we are in illustrator i've just created a new working document for my purposes of course if you are working on logos you predominantly want to work in cmyk and you probably want to work in black and white because if a logo doesn't look good in black and white or at least in grayscale at a bare minimum it's not going to work in color so you can see i have a really basic rudimentary sketch here of a rhinoceros that i have taken a picture of and just dragged it into uh, illustrator and we're going to use this as a reference so i'm going to lower my opacity here because i'm going to be using this as a bit of a template about 30 percent looks good and i'm just going to lock that and I've pulled in my uh, golden ratio template that I've made before. And I'm going to be predominantly working, if not solely working with circles here. Fear not though, if you don't have this or don't know how to create this, I'm going to explain it very briefly how you can create um, elements to use as a golden ratio. And it's super simple. So what I'll do is I'll actually duplicate this one and then I'll duplicate another one. If I can grab the dang thing, there we go. And I'm going to divide this by 1 point oops point six one eight and now you'll see as long as I didn't screw this up that, that fits perfectly into the next section and then of course if I wanted to go smaller I'd divide it down again again and again and again this is exactly how you'd create it you'd go and create a square do the same thing position them edge to edge to edge to edge to edge and so on so for our purposes I am just going to make a bunch of these circles divide them by 1.618 or multiply them by 1.618 if you want larger ones. It's a very simple process. I'm going to do that and we'll come right back. Alrighty, so once you've duplicated all of your circles and you've got enough of them, uh, just going to go ahead and align these real quick so that I have a visual reference. And now using them from here or pulling directly from my working ratio that I have up here, I'm just going to start bringing these out and laying them on my sketch. In fact, I'm going to move these over just a hair. Um, I'd recommend either working in outline mode, which would be command or control Y um, for lining these up. However, it's obviously not going to work with your sketch. Your sketch will disappear like you just saw on screen. So what you'll want to do is when you get into a situation, let's see here, um, probably use this for the center. 
If you get into a situation, though, when you're trying to, say, butt circles up edge to edge, um, if you don't have snapping turned on, go ahead and hit Control or Command Y, and you'll get a really good visual reference if you zoom in uh, on those to know whether or not they are lined up correctly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roughly lay out my shape here. Um, I should have been duplicating these, to be honest, and pulling them from my circle, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, I'm going to get my rough shape lined out here for the actual structure of the logo. And hopefully get everything fleshed out very easily and simply. I don't think those are going to work. Let's try and get the bottom of the face here. You want to start with everything that is a large shape. I don't think that's going to work too well for us there. That's going to work here on the bottom side, though to bring out this shape. Now I'm probably going to want the same again for the top here. Okay, so I think that's intersecting there quite well. I think I've gone and plotted out everything as close to how I think that it's going to look. Um, I think I've done that fairly well. Um, these obviously aren't exact because my sketch wasn't, you know, perfect, so to speak. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clear those loose ones there and toggle my sketch on and off again. I think that looks okay. Um, now I'm going to go over to my shape building tool on the left hand side here. And I'm essentially going to start plotting a shape. So I need to select all of these. And with my stroke still turned on, we go to our shape building tool here. And I'm going to essentially just start matching these up by drawing through them. Um, if you hold Alt to begin with and then draw lines through things, you'll get rid of them. So I can snip those off the edge there. Um, I know obviously I'm not going to need these pieces out here on the edges. This just helps me avoid any confusion uh, while I'm doing this. And then obviously these pieces out here are not going to be used. Neither is this or this. And these edges, that's not going to be used. These aren't going to be used either. So you can see that we're starting to get a little bit of a shape here. So let's start putting these together. I think as far as the eye goes, I might have to come back here. Definitely joining all of those sections together. Uh, I think now we can join that one together. We're going to leave the eye out for now. Uh, I am going to want to drag that through there and get rid of this. Same for the top here. Uh, you may need to go back through, zoom in, and uh, tidy up the edges since we have a stroke on them. They may have some weird interlacing uh, edges on them. But I know for a fact that I'm going to want to include all of this. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to want to get rid of these pieces here. Create a nice arc there in the horns. And then I think everything else, as easy and as simple as that looks, should be good. I think that's the one. So now I'm going to take my shape. And I'm just going to duplicate that. and give it a fill of let's just say red so we can see the dang thing and take off the stroke and then for this shape here we can delete that one if we can select it we cannot select it is it grouped it's not grouped oh you know what i may have done there we go just needed to get rid of that. So if you do have any weird funny sections like that uh, that don't quite add up or don't quite match up correctly and you've still got a weird stroke on them, just make sure that you go back through and uh, remove them, snip them out with the uh, with the Alt key. But there you go, there you have it. There's something that lines up pretty simple, uh, pretty easy. And although it may not be the best representation, uh, I do have another one that I spent a little bit more time on that I can show you as well. All right, here's the uh, other ones, kind of like a toucan face. Um, I was originally going for like a G, 
Um, and then I saw this picture of something that looks similar to this. And I was like, you know what? We can use the golden ratio to do that. This one's a lot more simple. Uh, there's a lot less going on here. But if I take my little my little toucan shape, you can see how that slots into there. And the golden ratio has been used for that. It's probably not exact. But there we go. You get the picture. So that is pretty much how you can use the golden ratio to create really simple and uh, timeless iconography or logo designs. I really hope that you learned something from this, guys. If you did, I'd really appreciate a like or a share or even both. And uh, if you want to see more videos like this and more education on things to do with freelance logo design and starting your freelance career, progressing your freelance career as a graphic designer, logo designer, brand designer, etc., then feel free to subscribe. And uh, for anything else, feel free to check out my channel, but I will catch you in another video. Take care. Have an awesome day. Bye-bye.